Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Last week we brought you our top five guns that we had reviewed of 2016, and in the video we mentioned that it was actually a difficult choice. We reviewed a lot of guns in 2016 and a lot of very fine guns, so it was fairly difficult to pick just five to show in a top five. So we decided to go ahead and do the runners-up, the top five runners-up, again sticking with guns that we reviewed in 2016, because there were some really good guns that just couldn't make the list of squeezing into the top five. Now unfortunately this antique Colt cap gun, that's, this thing's probably 60 plus years old, uh, we didn't review it in 2016 and it's a, uh, it's a replica of a Colt 45, so of course this one can't count for the top five runners-up. So we'll start out with number 10. And number 10 was a T&E gun that we got from our friends at Guns Galore. So we don't currently have it. So I'm using some video from when we actually had the gun and did a review on it just so you can see what it looks like. But it's the Smith & Wesson M&P chambered in 9mm. We didn't have it for very long, but we were really impressed with it when we had it. It, it was very easy to shoot. It was shot very well. And I'm willing to bet if we'd had it for a little bit longer, it might have been able to squeeze its way further up the list. The gun itself is similar to many of the other striker fired guns. It has the, number, you know, the same internal safeties, the same consistent trigger, and it actually had a quite nice trigger. This week uh, Smith & Wesson just announced the M&P M2.0 series, so we're going to try to get our hands on one of those and give it a try. But what we found is a very, very nice gun, and it slid into our number 10 slot. Number 9 is the SIG P320 TAC Ops chambered in 9mm. This is a factory suppressor ready gun right from SIG. Comes with four 21 round magazines. The coming with four magazines to begin with is pretty nice and these 21 extended mags they fit up into the grip is actually a pretty cool setup. With its suppressor ready sights your familiar P320 operation, all the same grip frame capabilities that you're used to with the P320, real nice trigger and easy to shoot well. It was easy to get on the top 10 list. A couple of things that kept it from sliding a little further up is that despite the fact that this grip frame concept is pretty cool, the grip frames themselves can be difficult to get a hold of, as well as the caliber conversion kits and size conversion kits being almost as expensive as a new gun that starts to have a little bit more of a niche market where if you're limited in how many guns you can have that really interests you. If you live someplace where you can just buy another gun it's almost as inexpensive to buy another gun. So a couple of those things along with the uh, odd thread pattern that they chose for their suppressor they yeah, kind of kept it from making it all the way up to the top five. But it is an excellent gun. It's very reliable. If we're lucky and they pass the Hearing Protection Act again this year, if they try again and succeed this year you might see an explosion of availability of suppressors, which would, of course, it really increase the desire for this gun. But overall, we really do like this gun. It works very well, it's been reliable, and it's a lot of fun to shoot. And it came in at our number nine slot. In number eight, we've got the Walther PPS M2 chambered in nine millimeter. And you probably saw in the prior year where we reviewed a classic, this is just the next generation of the M2. It does have a grip pattern that's very similar to the PPQ. Uh, this grip sleeve hammer put on here because he's got bigger hands and he was having a harder time adapting to that, the grip. And that is one of the limitations of this particular model. They took away the back straps, the interchangeable back straps, which really is one of the things that kind of pushed it from the top five down into the, you know, the next five. It comes with six, seven, and round, eight round available magazines. They fit into the grip and they do actually integrate well, just like with the PPQ. And they make a, they do make it a nice full hand grip. And you can see a little bit of the pattern here. They also change the, the release, the magazine release, instead of a paddle is now a button. So overall, it's an excellent gun. We've had a little bit harder time shooting this as well as we're able to shoot the Classic. And I think part of that's the different shape of the grip. We're just able to get a slightly better grip on the Classic. But this gun has been reliable. It does have quite a nice trigger and it's worked quite well. If you're looking for a carry gun, this is actually an excellent choice. It's thin, it's light. With the shorter magazine, it's got a nice short grip. 
longer magazine for extended capacity or a backup mag. And really, it could do everything you wanted to do from carry to nightstand. So there is number eight. And now we're on to number seven. And what would a top anything list be without at least one Glock on it? What we've got here is the Glock 21, chambered in 45 ACP. From the factory with 13 rounds in the magazine. And this is a Gen 4, so it comes from the factory with three magazines. A lot of aftermarket support for the Glocks, like this 28 round Korean fun stick. These aren't necessarily the most reliable mags on the planet, but of course you aren't going to be carrying this. This is more a fun, fun range day. But when you look at the Glocks, this one being a Gen 4, so it does have the interchangeable back straps, what you've got is consistent, proven reliability, consistency across the platform. If you have multiple Glocks in multiple calibers, you've got the same trigger, same basic operation of the gun. And it just overall is a perfect carry gun if you're going to go inside the waistband and you're somebody that would otherwise carry something like a 1911, but you're wanting the consistent trigger and lighter overall lighter package that's afforded by the striker fired guns this is a perfect way to move into the 45 it also makes an excellent nightstand gun full-size grip nice easy to see sights so basically it's one of those guns that can do almost everything you want it to do other than possibly fit the pocket so there is our number seven In number six, we've got the CZP07, and this one was kind of a back and forth toss up. It almost made number five on the, the top five list. There's a lot to like about this gun. It is a hammer fired gun. It's a chambered in nine millimeter. Comes with 15 rounds in the magazine, steel magazines. It's a very well constructed gun, very solid gun. It is a DASA type gun. But the Omega trigger that they're putting in the newer CZs is an excellent trigger. You can set it up for a decocker, like this one is set up, or you can set it up with a safety and it comes with the parts to interchange it. So you've got the flexibility of having it <clears throat> exactly the way you want it to be. With the rails inside, the, and the, actually on the outside of the slide, they're reversed from your typical gun, you get a nice low bore axis. When you combine that with the already light recoil of 9mm, you get a gun that's very easy to get back on target. It's actually pretty much an underrated gun. This is one of those guns that a lot of people don't know about, but really should. Very high quality gun, very fun to shoot, and it's, they're very popular in competitions. The, the CZs in general are very popular in competitions. The only thing that we did find with this gun is they're a little difficult to buy. They're difficult to buy because they're hard to find. But they're also difficult to buy because CZ's naming conventions make it very difficult to discern this one from some of the other variants like the CZ P07 Duty, which doesn't have as nice a trigger and doesn't have the interchangeable back straps. That what ends up happening is you get a lot of confusion on the online sites. It's hard to tell what you're actually buying. So if CZ could kind of get their naming conventions a little more orderly so that it's easier to understand exactly what it is you're getting, they might have a little bit more market penetration. But this is one of those guns more people should know about, and if you've ever fired one, you're going to want one. If you haven't fired one, go get one. Find somebody that's got one, take them to the range, and you really will enjoy the gun. So there's our number six. If you haven't seen our top five, we'll put a link to it in the description, as well as links to each of the reviews on every one of these guns. And at this point, we've enjoyed 2016. We'll sum up 2016 with this final top five runners-up list and start looking forward into 2017. And I hope 2017 is a great year for all of you. If you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, and have a great day. Thank you.